I wasn't sure how much experience people would have, so I just kind of started with basics. So why JavaScript? The big deal about JavaScript is it works everywhere. If you have a platform, JavaScript works in it. You don't need a web server. You don't need uh, a virtual machine. You don't need anything like that. It just works. And Flash used to be able to say that until this thing called the iPhone came along. And there's now a device that's popular that doesn't have Flash. The other interesting thing about JavaScript that a lot of people don't realize, because people don't talk about it, is that you can use it to script things besides web browsers. For instance, there is an entire development environment. If you buy CS3, CS4 from Adobe, you get an entire beautiful web development environment inside there that's hidden away that they barely talk about. And you can write stuff to script, Photoshop and InDesign, and it works really well. I've done some neat stuff. And you can also write little desktop things for widgets and gadgets, whatever platform you're on, whatever they call it. And you can do all that kind of stuff in JavaScript, too. So JavaScript gives you all the best of the above. And that's one of the things I like about it. Another reason for starting JavaScript as your first language is that it's really easy to start. If you've never done any programming before and you are intimidated by the concept of being a programmer, no, you don't need to go and buy the propeller beanie, and you don't need to go and buy the pocket protector. Um, I have both, but you don't have to. There are plenty of plug and play solutions where you can just get some code from somewhere, and chances are it will pretty much do what you want or something similar to it, and then you can just tweak it a bit or maybe not even tweak it at all. Uh, it's easy to learn, mostly because the code isn't compiled. All the code on the web browser is in your browser. You can just do view source and look at it, which makes it really easy for somebody to get started. There are also a whole lot of websites out there that teach JavaScript, and some of them are good. And there are also a whole lot of books out there that teach JavaScript, and again, some of them are good. So I'm going to talk a little bit in a bit about uh, what differentiates them. Um, Another reason for JavaScript is you get standard code concepts. If you've never worked with code before and you start working with JavaScript, what you learn in JavaScript is still useful if you move on then to Java or many of the other languages that you've heard people talking about tonight. Uh, and this to me is one of the big reasons to use it over, I've heard a lot of people talk about AppleScript and why they love it. The great thing about AppleScript is once you learn it, it doesn't apply to anything else in the world. So you can't take that knowledge and transfer it somewhere. So simple things like objects and conditionals and functions, you see them elsewhere. So, so what else do you need to do JavaScript? Pretty much stuff you already have. You don't need a web server. You don't need to install stuff. You need a browser and a text editor. A text editor is not a word processor. It's, a text, it's for editing text, not for styling it. Um, no. um, some places where you can get bit. Uh, how many people here have ever gotten an error because somebody said, oh, the JavaScript works fine in my browser? <laughs> Who here hasn't had that happen? Yeah, that's a totally better question. Um, you got to test it, and every time somebody comes out with a new browser, damn it, you got to test it some more. And that's a pain because they keep changing things. Uh, so unlike people who work on the server side, you don't have any control over what people have on the client. Another big problem is outdated and obsolete examples. Somebody came up with some cool way of doing an image rollover 10 years ago, and they put up a web page, and it's still there. And how you wanted to do it in 99 is not how you want to do it in 2009. So some of these things just need sell-by or expiration dates and they don't have it. So take a look and see when stuff is written for. Uh, and don't reinvent the wheel. Sarah was talking before about you can spend your time writing sliders and slideshows and uh, reveals. And don't do that either. There's some great frameworks out there. Use them instead. Uh, my personal preference these days, OK, somebody's raising a hand. 
Thank you. I'll slip you the 10 bucks. Uh, my personal preference these days is jQuery because it's, it's small, it's light, it works. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, they make a big deal about making it work very small and very tight. Uh, I've also, on the other hand, I like uh, the Yahoo stuff. I like the Spry stuff from Dreamweaver. Uh, I know the people behind Dojo, and there, there's a lot of good ones out there. On the other hand, there's over 100 different ones, and some of them are really good, like most other stuff. Um, if you have questions, it's, I should update my website. Dory.com is kind of obsolete, but I need to update it. I'll do that really soon. Uh, these are the books I've written, so if you have any questions about any of those things, uh, so I've written about JavaScript and CSS and Dreamweaver and all of those are for Peachpit Press in their quick start guide and quick project guides. And I think that's about it. Thank you.